good evening everyone. It's been a little while since I've made a video tutorial and I figured I had a bit of time tonight so I'd like to dive right back into it. So I'm going to take care of a few housekeeping things to begin with. The first thing is that if you're following along with these video tutorials and you haven't updated OpenGL for C Sharp, I recommend doing that from GitHub here. So you can go to github.com slash GIAWA and you can go and check out the most recent copy of OpenGL for C Sharp. Of course, if you're using source tree or another Git client before, you can just do a new checkout of it. The next thing I'd say is that if you can't wait for these videos to come and you want to check out what's happening in the future with the tutorials, you can always go onto GitHub and check out my OpenGL4 tutorials. And in here, I have 16 tutorials to date, ranging from the first four that we've already seen all the way through what we're going to do today and then off into the future here. And some of these follow tutorials that are online, some of them I've sort of made up. So there's a bit of a mix here. And I'd like to keep making these. So hopefully you'll see new things here added all the time. With that said, I'm going to jump right into the project that I've created here. And this project is based on OpenGL tutorial number four. You can see that when I launch this program, it's doing exactly what we left off with there. It's got a triangle and a square and it's transforming them in space. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to turn these from 2D objects Really, they're 3D, but I'm going to change them from just being a single plane here into actual 3D objects that we can rotate around, such as a pyramid and a cube. So let's start working through that. Uh, I'm going to make a few little notes here that you'll notice are a little bit different. The first is the addition of this glut close function. I've added this into all of my tutorials because I want to take care of disposing of all of the vertex buffer objects and shader programs that I created. So you'll see here that there's an associated on close method here that disposes of the triangle, triangle colors, elements, the program, and so on. So we'll continue to have this in the future tutorials. And if you check out the OpenGL4 tutorials from GitHub, you'll notice that it's been added in all the previous tutorials as well. The other thing you might notice is that the shaders have been modified a little bit. I've provided this version declaration here. And instead of using GL frag color, or GL frag data, I think it was, I'm now providing a vector for output called fragment and I assign the color to that. This just gives a little bit of better compatibility across graphics cards and deals with a few of the issues that some people had when doing these tutorials. So with that housekeeping taken care of, let's dive right into it. I'm going to quickly remove all, well, actually no, we'll just go and modify this in place. So I'm going to go and refactor and rename this BBO vector three to now be called pyramid. And that's going to be my new pyramid 3D object. And you can see it will just preview that. And I'm going to go and refactor, rename the square to be a cube. We don't really need to preview it. I'm going to go and refactor this guy to be pyramid color. And I'm going to modify this one to be cube color. And finally, we'll take care of the elements here. I'm going to rename this one to be pyramid elements. And I'm going to rename this guy here to be cube elements. All right, so just the fact of remain, or renaming these from square to cube doesn't actually change the type of data that's being drawn. So we have to go and modify this section a little bit here. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so that it's a bit easier to see for people who are viewing this at a lower resolution. So hopefully that helps out. All right, so we do need to make some changes here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to modify this pyramid. So I'm going to draw four different faces for this pyramid, a front face, a right face, a back face, and a left face. So let's just start with the front face here. I'm going to go and put my first, let's, let's put this all into new lines just to make it a little bit nicer to see. So I'm going to put my front face here, new vector three at zero, one and zero. So this is the very top point. And what have I done here? New vector three, let me tell it it's an array. All right. So that's my very top point, and I'm going to continue with my front face by putting a vector 3 at negative 1, negative 1, and 1. So that's the bottom left-hand corner of my front face. My next one is going to be 1, negative 1, and 1, which is the bottom right-hand corner of my front face. So this is my front face here. And just to make this have less syntax errors, I'm going to put that in there. I'll do one of these. All right, sorry about that. My next vertex is at 0, 1, and 0, once again the top point, and I'm going to be doing the right face this time. So my next one is going to be at 1, negative 1, and 1. So you can imagine that this is at the bottom right hand corner if I was looking at the triangle from the front. If I was looking at from the right, coming in this direction, it would be at the bottom left hand corner there. 
So my next one needs to be at the bottom right hand corner looking from the right. So that's going to be at one, negative one, and negative one. So this is my right base. All right, the next one I'm going to do is the back base. So I'm going to start again with the top point of the triangle and we'll continue to move over to one, negative one, and negative one. And then our next one is at negative one, negative one, and negative one. So that's our back base. Right. Finally, we're going to do the left base. So let's do this at zero, one, and zero, which is again that top point. Negative one, negative one, negative one. And finally, our last point is going to be at negative one, negative one, and one. Perfect. So those are all the vertices that make up our pyramid. I'll just comment this as the left base. Now what we have to do is we need to update this pyramid color to include all those new points as well. So let's go and do that. I'm going to take a similar format. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a bright red color for all the top points. And I'm going to apply a gradient to this pyramid. So I'm going to put different colors at each of the points except for the top one. I'm going to try and match it up as best I can. So we'll, we'll look at the effect here. But red is what I'm going to put at the top of all of these triangles. And I'm going to try and match it up so that the bottom left hand corner <clears throat> is always green and the bottom right hand corner is always blue. So you'll see me trying to match those up here. So this one's going to be a green color. Oh, sorry, that's a blue. Yeah, sorry, green. Getting my RGBs all mixed up. Okay, red again. A little bit tedious. We'll, uh, we'll take care of some copy pasting to do the cube section here, just so it's a little bit quicker. So this is our last face here, and this is going to be blue and green. All right, perfect. Now, finally, we need to update this pyramid elements, which are really just the triangles that we need to do here. So this is pretty simple. I just need to go and include all the vertices. That's all there is to it. So let's, let's not run the cube this time. Um, we'll just comment out the cube for now. And let's just try out this pyramid here. See how it looks. All right, very cool. So we've got this rotating pyramid. You can see it's a 3D object. We've got four different faces here and it's rotating around. So next we're gonna tackle the cube and just to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to copy paste this through the magic of already having done this. So we're going to create a cube with vertices and colors. All right, so you can imagine here that a cube has six faces. It's got its front, left, right, back, and then a top and a bottom as well. So these correspond to those six different faces. And here I'm going to change this to say cube elements. And then again, I've applied some colors to each of those quads. And then lastly, I've gone and created that cube elements VBO there. We don't need to change any of the code that's down here to actually rotate it and draw it. And because we did a refactor rename, all of our disposal methods are still here. So let's just compile this and run it and see what we have. All right, that's pretty cool. So we have here a 3D cube, each face being drawn a different color, and a 3D pyramid, which takes, uh, takes advantage of that linear interpolation of different colors on those vertices. So you can see that every vertex had red as its common color at the top, and then it changed to a different color depending on what side of the pyramid we're on. Right, we could probably make this a little bit more interesting by just changing how the pyramid and the cube rotate. So let's go and do that a little bit by modifying this transformation right here. And this should actually be transform the cube, draw the pyramid. Oh, well, I don't need to update all those, you, you probably get the point. All right, so let's go and transform that cube here. So we're going to create two different rotations. Right now, I'm just rotating about the X axis. I'm also going to rotate about the Y axis. So we can do matrix four dot create rotation Y. And let's do it by something a little bit different than angle. We'll do angle divided by two. So this will just make it a little bit more neat. There we go. It's a lot easier to see the different faces on that cube. So that's all there is to it. For tutorial number five, we've gone and taken our 2D shapes that we were transforming and made them into 3D shapes. So pretty straightforward. I hope that was interesting and as always, happy coding.